Name a desert. Let me guess, hmm. Sahara? Well, actually, no matter which one you thought of, I'm sure of one thing. It's located somewhere below this line. See, when we hear the word deserts, we usually picture dry, sandy, blazing hot places. And there's not a single one of those above 45 degrees north latitude or below 45 degrees south. In the south, that kind of makes sense. I mean, if you leave out Antarctica, there's not a whole lot of land down there. But things are different above 45 degrees north. There are tons of land. Countries like Canada, France, the United Kingdom, and a bunch of others. And still, not a single desert. Actually, not a hot desert. Most of the major hot deserts are up in the northern hemisphere, near the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn. And the hottest ones are usually found between 15 and 30 degrees north or south of the equator. Just like the Sahara, where average high temperatures can reach up to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Together, hot deserts cover almost 15% of the Earth's land area. But if our planet is packed with them, why doesn't a single one appear above this line? I mean, the 45 degrees north latitude. I'll explain. Let's divide Earth into five main zones. The polar regions are located at both ends, north and south. Right here, we have the two temperate zones. And finally, right in the middle of the globe is the tropical zone. Now, the line we're talking about sits in the temperate zone in a colder area. Because the farther you go away from the equator, the colder it gets. Actually, the average annual temperature drops about 1.2 degrees Fahrenheit for every degree of latitude you move north in the northern hemisphere. And cold weather is the main reason hot deserts don't form above this line. It turns out that as you move farther north from the equator, the sun's rays hit the Earth at a more slanted angle. That spreads the solar energy over a larger area, which means less heat is concentrated in one spot. Basically, these regions just don't get as hot. And it's one of the reasons why countries like Finland are much colder than Colombia, for example. Another reason temperatures are lower in this zone has to do with something called albedo. Basically, this term refers to the amount of sunlight that a surface reflects back. Let me give you an example. Every surface on Earth both reflects and absorbs sunlight, but in different amounts. Take snow, for example. It can reflect up to 90% of the sunlight that hits it and only absorbs about 10%. That's what gives snow a high albedo. And it's totally different with sand, which has a lower albedo. In places like the Kalahari Desert, down in southern Africa, it's about a 50-50 situation. Most of the year, roughly 50% of the sunlight gets reflected around there, and the other 50% is absorbed. The heat absorbed by the sand is part of why it gets so hot in dry places like deserts. I mean, hot deserts. Simply put, sand soaks up more heat, while snow reflects most of it. This is one of the reasons why snowy areas stay much cooler. So the closer you get to the polar zones, the easier it is for sunlight to be reflected instead of absorbed. And that helps explain why there aren't any hot deserts around those parts. Then we also have atmospheric patterns. Let's just say that the air patterns change a lot once you go above that 45 degree line. That's because this region is controlled by a wind belt known as the feral cell. Okay, so Earth has three main convection cells. You can think of them as big loops of moving air. Warm air rises, cools down, sinks, and then the cycle repeats. At the top and bottom of the planet, we have the polar cells. Right in the middle are the Hadley cells. And sandwiched between those two are the feral cells. Now, everything that happens between these three cells can get a little complicated. But for today, the main thing to know is this. In those middle zones, the warm air that comes from the tropics meets the cold air from the polar regions. So, feral cells play a big role in moving heat from the equator up toward the poles. This flow of warm air helps smooth out the temperature differences between the tropics and the polar regions. And that's what shapes the weather in places like North America, Europe, and parts of Asia. In the mid-latitudes, the feral cell keeps the air moving around so much that hot, dry air doesn't really get a chance to settle. 
So those regions end up with more moisture, more clouds, and even storms, rather than dry, desert-like weather. That's why you don't usually see hot deserts around 45 degrees latitude. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that the feral cell makes the weather less stable. And that's very different from what happens in the Sahara Desert, for example. Over there, temperatures don't change all that much throughout the year. Just expect it to be hot. When you put all these factors together, it helps explain why hot deserts are mostly limited to the middle parts of the Earth, and why you'll never find a Sahara or Kalahari-style desert in places like Canada or Sweden. But that doesn't mean we don't have any deserts above the 45-degree line. Turns out, deserts don't always have to be hot and sandy. In fact, they can look like this. Yep, I'm talking about the Arctic. Because the actual definition of a desert isn't just some hot, dry, sandy place. It's really any area that gets very little precipitation. In other words, an area where it doesn't rain much and it usually gets no more than 10 inches of precipitation per year. So, no matter if the weather is hot or cold, deserts are really dry places with hardly any vegetation around. That makes it pretty tough for animals and plants to live in those environments. If you think about it, that means the biggest desert on Earth is Antarctica. It covers about 5.5 million square miles, just endless ice flats as far as the eye can see. It's also the coldest desert on the planet, even colder than the Arctic, which is the other polar desert. Temperatures there can drop as low as minus 128.2 degrees Fahrenheit. If you look at the Earth, about 33% of its land is desert. Now, pay close attention to the ones located between 15 and 30 degrees latitude. These are called tropical deserts. But can you notice something curious about their locations? Most of them are found on the western edges of continents. And there's a reason for that. Actually, four main reasons. First, the winds that bring rain usually blow from the east. When they move across the land, they drop most of the rain early on. By the time these winds reach the west side, they're dry. So there's no rain left for those areas. That already makes things pretty dry. Second, in the western margins of continents, the air usually goes down instead of up. When air goes down, it gets warmer and can't form clouds. So again, no rain. Third, if there are mountains nearby, they can block the rain too. One side of the mountain gets all the moisture, and the other side, called the rain shadow, stays dry. And lastly, the ocean near these places often has cold water. Cold water cools the air above it and makes it calm, so clouds don't form easily. No clouds means no rain. So when you put all of that together, it helps explain why those tropical deserts seem to prefer one side of the continent more than the other. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.